Good morning, everyone. Sam here. You should be able to see the screen. Sound should be coming in fine. All right, great to see everyone. I saw we just had a little internet issue uh, a few seconds ago, but it uh, looks like it's fine now, so we'll just keep moving forward. Okay, great. So far, so good with the with the new uh, the new platform here, the new uh, learning environment or environment that we're using for all this. And again, if you have any any questions, any challenges, uh, any thoughts, ideas you want to share, just you know, please keep doing that. And on our end, we'll get we'll get better too at everything we're doing as far as the technology and and the environment we're in here. So. Uh, D2, <clears throat> don't be afraid of thinking, oh, it is? It is? Okay, Joe. Yeah, so well, that's good. The uh, refresh time is quicker. We're using TradeStation. Things are moving in the right direction. Don't be afraid of thinking different. Be afraid of thinking like everyone else. Yeah, tutorials are coming on, on everything, Ali everything give us a little bit of time on that and in the meantime if you have any like burning questions always ask but tutorials are coming on uh, everything that's really important so yeah again you know don't be afraid of thinking different be afraid of thinking like everyone else um, few places is that more true than how people you know think and understand financial markets exactly how and why price moves, turns and moves in a market, exactly how money is made and lost in markets. Um, you know, there's a reason why very few do this right and the majority do this wrong. Again, I, uh, I had a, a big light bulb moment early on in the days uh, when I was on the trading floor at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. It all really came together and hit me when I realized there's two groups at play in the markets, the ones who do well and the ones who don't. And when you look at the actions of what both groups are doing at the actual you know, transaction level like I was, it became very clear. When one group is you know, buying in a significant way, the other group is typically selling and vice versa. And when you dive into the question of why, everything uh, becomes clear and makes sense after that. And you realize why, um, you know, the, the, the professional, the Wall Street professional makes so much money and everyone else doesn't. And that's obviously what we focus on here. All right. So let's keep going. Now that we have one day under our belt, we can start, uh, we'll usually almost always start with, reviewing the prior day's evidence. <laughs> and again, this is meant to um, help you understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. We'll try to get it right all the time. We won't get it right all the time, but we'll do our best. And, um, and when we say we'll do our best, what we do is just come at this with um, almost no bias and just focus on supply and demand in the market. And what is that telling us? Everything else is secondary after that. Yesterday we said equity index markets are higher across the bar uh, across the globe with economies opening up again. This is all what we went over yesterday. This has brought price up to S&P and Nasdaq supply. And we said a decline, you know, was expected. However, and this is where, you know, I, I think so far anybody that has any uh, exposure to, you know, the supply and demand uh, strategy that we cover here. I think, you know, yesterday it was pretty clear that those markets were coming up to supply, right? We've gone over those levels a while. They were pretty clear on the charts. However, we need an edge. We need to take things to an edge that's that's deeper and better and stronger than everybody else out there, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's probably the main reason you're here, okay? Um, you probably didn't need... Jasmine or I to point out that the NASDAQ was hitting a supply zone yesterday. Maybe some of you did, and that's fine. But um, so when we look deeper, okay, 
Um, we said, while decline is expected, inverse markets like the dollar, bonds, gold are not near key fresh demand zones. We also need to look deeper at the S&P. And remember, we did that. I want to make sure everybody learns this, right? So yesterday we said, look, fantastic supply zone structure-wise, right? Makes sense. Fantastic supply zone structure-wise. But when we look at location, these two levels are inside of all this. All of this is a pullback to that. So when you compare yesterday's supply zones to this one up here, does everybody clearly see the difference? Okay, clearly? All right. Now, I would argue that structure-wise, these two supply zones from yesterday are better than this one. Why? Because there's less trading. But I would still risk more money on this upper one than these lower two because of location. Make sense? And again, we're, I repeat it at the end here. Again, while decline is more likely than a rally from current price, which is yesterday's, you know, early on yesterday, uh, caution on risk and probability because of, you know, that uh, those two things. One, the inverse markets were not in our favor. They weren't against us. They just weren't in our favor. And location of where these zones were was a little suspect. And there's that dollar. Anyway, what happened yesterday? Obviously, the S&P hit that supply zone and fell, just like the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ fell a ton. And then, um, and right now, the S&P is right back up into this area. Okay. So, again, a little bit deeper understanding, a little bit deeper edge building. And we can do that here in these sessions, in everything we do, because now it's, it's kind of one focus, one razor sharp focus on one strategy and one set of rules. So we'll, uh, we'll all get there. Moving into today, the equity index markets are mixed with typically strong markets like the NASDAQ being weak and typically weak markets like the DAX, Nikkei, and those being strong. That doesn't happen too often. The second group, um, like DAX, Nikkei, and others, are um, nearing larger time frame supply while the NASDAQ is sitting below our supply zone from yesterday. We'll look at that in just a few minutes. So inverse markets today to the equities still have some room. They've started to fall, but there's still room uh, to fall to demand. Okay. So just noticing that yesterday, you can hopefully understand a little bit why the equities uh, rallied up a little. Caution on new overnight demand zones that we're going to look at in a minute in the equities as overall price is close to supply. There's a chart of the... DAX daily chart right there. You can see how close it is to that. Um, we, we moved the supply zone really up to the meat of that area. So about 11,850 is what you'd be looking at there. Okay. And then with uh, these, these weaker markets so strong, you can look at the NASDAQ over there, the four hour just kind of sitting and resting below the supply. All right. So hopefully you understand and you're starting to understand how we, you know, this whole puzzle is put together and we could... We've got, uh, you know, we can look a little bit deeper into our one set of rules, our one thought kind of process and come to these conclusions. So before we dive into the live markets, uh, some of you have already been, you know, seeing this uh, for months now with me and others are new to it. Some people are in these positions. So um, every Monday night, there is a strategic portfolio session with Bill Nelson. And he'll hold other sessions from time to time to uh, when, when updates are necessary and things like that. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, since given that his next session is not till Monday, there are some updates that I thought we'd send just a few minutes going over here. Okay. Um, before I dive into that, yeah, so Trader Joe, that's a good question there. Um, yeah, a couple of things with that. So... Uh, I was, I was not a part of uh, uh, any part of education leadership with uh, putting in the six step, the six step process. So that was uh, that was done after I had uh, much influence over that, or really any influence over that. And yeah, the trend boxes. Um, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm not a fan of that. And um, and the reason is because many, and I just want to be clear with this. And I've been kind of vocal on that. Um, so 
when those red and green boxes, well, yeah. So Chris, uh, you know, you know uh, and I'm not, yeah, I mean, it, right. But, but let me explain why. Um, when the red and green, green box thing came out, you know, I kind of asked, you know, so what's this all about? Where did this come from? What's the logic behind it? And, you know, there wasn't really, um, there wasn't really, I don't know. I didn't really get a much of an answer. So, uh, but here's the, here's, here's why I started to ask. Okay. I had many mastermind students start coming to me and saying, Hey, I just, you know, took the, uh, retook core strategy class and, you know, I've got these, this trend, uh, these trend boxes. They said, but my, and this is mastermind students coming to me. And they said, my challenge is, you know, they're, they're in place to help us, you know, look, where should we look for zones? I guess that's the purpose of them, right? Where should you be looking for zones? And what mastermind students came to me with, they said, if I follow what they're telling me to do, I'm now forced to find zones that are in the white space. So what's going on here, Sam? Help me understand this. How do I make sense of this? Right. Okay, yeah. So I didn't even, yeah, they call it area of interest. I didn't even know that. So, uh, but I had a lot of mastermind students coming to me confused because they said, look, Sam, you're telling us not to trade in the white space, but this these these new uh, trend boxes, the red and green boxes are, that's where they're, that's where they're focused, that's where your focus is, is in the white space. So anyway, again, I'm not here to um, do anything other than, you know, uh, speak to that. But so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I've, I've never brought them into the morning sessions that we did for, you know, uh, since they came out. And uh, and again, it's so it's, it's been an awkward position for me uh, for the last three years because, you know, I've just been focused on doing uh, more of what we're doing here and not really involved with uh, the education team. So anyway, that's the conflict, but um, it's, it, it comes down to, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to trade in the white space or don't you? And I think we have a new name for the white space, by the way. But in fact, let me just throw it out here now. Um, and this was, uh, someone came up with this yesterday. We, we, we were looking for a new name in a different session and someone said the, I think it was novice space and pro space. Yes, there you go. Novice space and pro space. Um, so let me know what you think of that. And if you have any better ideas, let me know. But I think we really need to rename it because what is you know what does white space really mean? Anyway, so that's the conflict with the boxes. And and and, and look, the reason why I, I'm I'm answering your uh, uh, you know your question there is because. Yeah, Trader Trader J is because um, obviously your question suggests to me that in your mind you're you're con, you know what so what happens with the six steps and why aren't why aren't we talking about this and that and that's why okay that's where the and it all started for me with many mastermind students coming to me saying hey there's a conflict here so um, yeah all right. Yeah. Novice space and pro zones. Okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyway, we're getting there. Okay. So let's, uh, let's do a quick update. Then we'll get to the live markets here because we do have plenty to go over. And then remember after our session today, there's about a 15 minute break. And then uh, Jasmine's going to, uh, she'll have a uh, day trading, active trading, day trading session in uh, looking at uh, futures and Forex. Okay. And look, you know, I, I know some of those questions are a little awkward for you to ask. They're a little awkward for me to answer, but I think we just need to get through that because if you're if there's conflict going on in your head, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just wasting time. So feel free to get that out there. If you're not comfortable asking questions in the public forum, just just shoot me an email. Uh, no problem, or shoot us an email. Not a problem at all. Okay, uh, so the Q's Disney which we've uh, been going over a lot and Intel both met their profit targets. So any, I don't know if anybody was in these, anybody in the Disney, the Q's or Intel. And this is from our, um, this is from uh, the Q's or from the March. 
Okay, great. Awesome. And if anybody cares to share their, their risk reward or how they handled that, options, outright stock, that, that will help other members uh, uh, know what they did and, and or understand what to do and, and feel comfortable taking these positions. Now, the, the nice thing is that the Q's met entry for us on the 23rd, right? Uh, but Disney and Intel, we found demand zones after the turn for those. All right, well done. So, and, um, and I can't, I'm not taking credit for either of these. Bill Nelson, Bill, are you with us here today? I think Bill's in the session. He might be in the session, but these are all Bill Nelson. There he is. Great job, Bill. So you, you can, uh, there's Bill in the chat. So he's with us here today. He, he found these, um, I might've found the cues, but these other two were tricky, especially Disney. That was a, that was a fantastic find. Um, and if you remember the Disney one, after entry, there was probably the worst news you can have on a stock, and it collapsed right into the demand zone again and took off. So well done there. Okay, Disney also pays a pretty decent dis dividend. Um, and look at look at Intel. All right, let's keep going. So here they are. I just put them all on one screenshot for you. Now, if someone is still in. Uh, one, maybe not these, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but one thing going forward too, when when Bill finds some some nice, uh, let's go back here for a second. When when Bill finds some And we won't spend too much time. The point I was trying to make, I'm not sure the, the, uh, the last thing you um, heard was. My point was when, when Bill finds, uh, again, great job, Bill, on, on, on these finds down here, Disney and Intel. Those were fantastic. And remember, those were not the March low. So those were tricky finds. But when you get into some of these that pay a nice dividend and you're saying, you know what, I'd love to hold on to this for as long as possible. So what you can do, even if like a Disney meets Target, right? We, we can look, and, and Bill Bill and I talked about this. He'll, he'll point this out too. If new demand zones develop between your entry and the profit target and it pays the stock pays a nice dividend and you want to stay in it, we can move stops to you know just below the new demand zones. And I'm not saying there's a new demand zone here, but does everybody get the point? And, and that's all stuff. And again, those sessions uh, are every Monday evening. And, um, but the, but the portfolio gets updated, uh, the, the portfolio does get updated. Um, just making sure I'm sharing here. Uh, when it, when, when the market dictates, it should get updated. Okay. Does it sound okay? Sounds all right. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. So Bill's on top of that. And again, um, Make sure you understand too, the portfolio isn't just updated in the Monday sessions. The portfolio is updated and you'll see the date of the updates uh, when you go to the portfolio section, uh, you know, inside membership. All right. All right. Well done on, um, on those, whoever took those. Let's get into the live markets here. And all right, there's the S&P. So let's start here. So. The S and P has come up to uh, where to find that. So that's uh, in the investor section, and um, I think Nick's with us. He can he can help you find that too. He can type in the chat. 
So the S&P has come up to our uh, 3034 supply uh, that we went over on the 60 minute chart. This is the second level. Okay. And, um, and we're now falling from that. The, the fact that we just touched this level and turned uh, suggests there's some a decent amount of supply up there. Okay. A nice uh, supply demand and balance. Just remember, like we went over yesterday, this is the upper level that is still inside all this. So, again, likely that prices fall from that level as they are, but uh, but just remember the location of that of that opportunity. Now, this is far, but just so you have it in your mind, where is the next quality fresh supply zone in the S and P? Um, there's other stuff that's going to come up before this, but the thirty two two seventeen you can see is completely fresh, right? Anything below this, like anything inside here, the 60-minute levels we're looking for in here, they're working fine and price is turning, but they're all part of inside all of this, right? And all of this is a pullback to that, right? So make sure you can clearly see there's the, the, key, the key level, right? And it doesn't mean just wait for that. It means understand that so we can adjust – you know, your entries, you know, your, your profit targets and your position size accordingly. Now, I know I keep explaining that, but everybody understand that? Obviously, those 60-minute levels that price turned at yesterday, price turned at today, they're inside here. So what does that mean for profit taking? And what I mean is, how should that be different than a level like this? Right? It means maybe be more aggressive on profit taking especially given location of the levels in here and what the inverse markets are telling us. And what does it mean for risk? This is the big one. Should you take on the same amount of risk on a, say a 60 minute level inside here when inverse markets are not directly in our favor versus the risk you take on, on a level up here like that? That's where the magic is. If you can, if you can understand that, and again, we're going to build models and clear visuals so you can, you know, learn this and grasp this. But that's the key. Okay. Doesn't mean you have to just have to sit and wait forever for a great level. We're getting turns at plenty of these levels. Okay. And and when I say risk, I mean the actual dollar amount. Or let let's say you're you're you've determined that normal normal risk is you know X percent of your account. Well, if that's your normal risk, then half the risk is half that. Okay, we'll get into that in another session. Going down to the 30-minute chart, just want to point out how far we are from this gap demand right here. Okay, so when you look at the spiders or the day session S&P, we're pretty far from that demand zone. We're getting a little more information when we go over to the NASDAQ here, so let's do that. And let's start with the uh, four-hour chart. So, again, the what has been the strongest market is now uh, one of the weaker ones. We did come up to this first supply zone right here. Um, anybody take this trade and, and care to share what they did with it? Maybe you got in and out. Maybe you're in it and still in it. Um, we did come down to this area here. Um Again, anybody that shares their risk reward helps uh, helps other people that are not actually taking trades yet. This was a perfect candidate for micros for most people, simply because the the you know the uh, this is a four hour supply zone in a, in a in a time in history where volatility is through the roof, right? Okay. All right. Still in it. Okay. Yep. Not a bad idea with the other equity index markets uh, reaching supply also. Uh, let's go over, let's go to the 60 real quick. Actually, let's go to the 15 because there's a demand zone down here. If you're looking for, uh, you know, a profit target, this is not a fantastic demand zone and it's certainly not in a great area. But we would expect a bounce, at least a bounce in price from the 93.65. And if you brought this level up to the, the top of this whole area, uh, price did touch this level already. So I uh, wouldn't expect this to be, I mean, you could get a big turn from here, but um, 
you know, there's, this is not the perfect level. But if you're looking for a profit target and, and you're considering something close, something just before the 93.64 might not be a bad idea. Looking below that, if uh, you want to hold out for a bigger move, we have some overnight demand that comes in closer to 92.34 in the NASDAQ. And you've got a nice entry going already from, you know, from up here, the, uh, uh, the 97, uh, 95.78. Okay. And let's keep going. Let's go to the, let's go to the Russell. So here's a level we went over yesterday. This is that four hour supply zone. We actually came up and reached it. This is not an overnight area. There's yeah, two, two, two levels sitting on top of each other. Um, what's developed too is a uh, 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 possibly a demand zone. Now remember the blue circle and we're getting close to being able to share the new guide with you. So I think we'll be able to share that tomorrow. Jasmine and I are working on it. But um, the blue circle means this is the level that's developing but not officially a level yet. Um, well, what really needs to happen for this to become a quality zone to buy at, we need to take out more of this supply. Okay. Now, if prices do turn lower in uh, this market and others and come down to this 1,400 demand, we would expect a bounce higher from this level. But if you're expecting a big bounce from this area, we'd probably need to take out more of this supply first. And that hasn't happened yet, and that's the reason for the blue circle. And uh, let's see. Okay, let's go to the let's go to thirty minute chart so I can share this gap demand with you, just like we did in the uh, I believe in the Nasdaq, right? Thirteen fifty one, which is quite a bit lower uh, from where price is right now. That's that gap demand. It's the origin of the move up through all this supply. So that's a key area, but it's quite a bit lower. And then we do have an overnight demand zone on the fifteen minute chart. Again. Um, we're putting this in not because we would take it, but because I think a lot of people would look at this because structure-wise, it looks like a perfect level. Um, but given how close we are to supply, uh, this is a lower probability level. So if anything, you'd want to take this, you know, you, you, you might want to consider uh, that that half-risk type of position or just skip it, right? Could it work? Sure. We wouldn't even be mentioning it if, it, if, if, there, you know, if that wasn't the case. Uh, but it's these are... A little bit too close for to supply for our liking. You want those, remember, the wider the profit zone, the greater the probability, right? Probability and profit zone absolutely go hand in hand. Now, when we look at the Dow, um, take a look, right? Our, our first real quality fresh supply zone. Now, this is similar to that level in the S&P that I keep going over with, that upper one that's really fresh on the four hour, this is the same one. Here it is in the Dow. So price is really far from that. Um, it would be nice to get above this stuff here before we consider this uh, a demand zone at 2,500. And that may happen, right? We just need to let, let the market play out a little bit. As we get into the inverse markets here in a minute, you'll see they still have some room to fall, which is not bearish for equities. Um, here is, uh, uh, here's that level from yesterday price barely touched that level and turned higher. Um, now we have a new one up here that starts really around 25 to 75. It's 25 to 75. Again, that's an overnight demand zone. So a little close to supply, but, um, a bounce from there is expected. And real quickly, Again, just want to update you. I think I we went over this. Um, there's that neat guy that has that supply above, and you can see this market has just been racing higher to the 22,045 supply. Right. Yeah, Ed. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely cover it for sure in the series. Friday's part one. It, we'll, we'll, we'll cover all that. And we're going to remember in, in that strategy symposium, you're going to, you know, we're, we're building a library of lessons. So the supply demand strategy will be in there. Lessons on entry stop target will be in there. Uh, profit and probability that'll be in there. Some of those lessons will be an hour. Some will be 
10 minutes and some will be something in between. Does that make sense? Okay. Bill will have a library of lessons. I'll have a library of lessons. Everyone will. And after a month or so, you're going to see, you know, just full blown everything in there. Um, and if you know, have know nothing about options, but you want to get interested, well, it's not a separate program or anything else. You already have access to it. Um, you know, you, there'll be, there'll be lessons on options in there from one of the, from one of the best, uh, options, um, people out there. I don't know if anybody was in, in uh, Steve Moses options, uh, session last night, but, uh, he's outstanding. And what's so great about Moses is not only are his positions typically really good, but it's the way he explains things. Um, it's, uh, if you haven't heard the Doritos story yet, you definitely need to, anybody heard the Doritos story yet? Yeah. All right. So make sure that my advice is your first impression with options should be the Doritos. And if you get that, it, it, options are not uh, that complicated. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. So there's the neat guy. And um, while we are getting close to supply, we now have some demand below the 2750 uh, area. Okay. Uh, that's an Ekai. Now let's move into some of the inverse markets. So let's look at the uh, let's look at the ten year here. So remember yesterday we were saying, look, this ten year is is really in the middle, um, and it has room. You know, since then it's dropped and and actually dropped quite a bit. Uh, there's still room down to this one thirty eight eleven. Okay, and if if prices go deeper into this level, then we would expect to turn higher. Uh, and that would probably have the equity index markets up deep into supply uh, and, and set up for a nice drop, right? Coming down to some of the smaller time frames here. Um, oops, not the 60. Let's go down to the, oh, the 15. Sorry about that. So we gave you both of these levels yesterday. Uh, prices ended up turning at the upper, lo upper level. Um and um, I think Bill, Bill, this is a uh, Bill's in this position. Well done, Bill. And we try to, between all of us, we try to take a number of these trades as well. So, kind of whatever markets we're watching, and uh, along the lines of our plans, you know, we we watch those and take them too. So, with again bonds coming up to supply and falling, that's one of the things that was in our back of our mind yesterday. With oh, be careful, these equity index markets might not be as 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 weak as we think overall. Okay, let's keep going. And let's go to the 30 year real quick. We're not going to spend too much time here. Okay. So looking at the 30 year, we um, let's focus on this 60 minute chart. Right, so over the last few days, price has just gone from our supply and is nearing our demand down here. But remember, this demand zone is not fresh, so there's room for prices to move. Uh, there's room for prices to move lower. Okay, and we would we would focus more on that 10-year demand uh, on that 60-minute chart. So we'll wait for that to happen. Right, at least we know prices are getting close to there. So in the back of your mind, equities into supply, bonds getting closer to that demand. That's bearish equities. All right, let's take a look at oil. And um, so oil hasn't really, it looks like oil hasn't moved yet uh, much, but yesterday, um, I'm curious if anyone took this trade. We went over the supply zone in oil, and this was found on the 30 or 60 minute chart. That's these, they're right there. Two areas sitting on top of each other. Remember, we went over that. Anybody take the short oil? What happened was we had a big breakout out of these out of these recent highs, the highs of the last week. We had a quick little breakout right into supply. That sends a bullish, you know, message out to the world saying, "Hey, we've got a new multi-day high in oil." That's typically a buy signal for people. Um, when that takes you right into fresh supply. You know, typically it's it's novices buying because you're they're buying after a big rally in price and into a price level. 
or major institutions are sellers of oil. And, and you've got professionals on the other side of that trade. And there you go. So that's why price just stayed up there for literally a few minutes. And now it's obviously well below. Um, not much else to say about oil other than we now have secondary evidence that supply exceeds demand up here, right? Okay, so if you do get a push higher into these areas, you might want to, um, if you're looking to trade oil, you might want to consider the upper level. Okay. And there's one that there's that level sitting just on top of that. Two things to note on the profit uh, zone side. Notice how far demand is, 29.40 or 29.50 below. And just last week, here's, here's one of the, the low of last week. So the fact that price was down here last week means there's not likely to be significant demand above that price. If there was, price never would have came down to this level, right? Okay. Um, I think that's it on oil. Other than that, you don't have much uh, that's changed. Let's go over to gold. So gold, if we look at the four-hour chart here, gold is dropping as expected. We talked about this yesterday because there's really not much to stop it until we get down to around the uh, 1647 demand, right? This is right in that novice space, right, formerly known as white space. And, um, you know, again, not much to stop it. We probably don't want to put money at risk in this area. And now let's go down to the 30-minute chart. Um, you know, actually, let's go to the daily because you'll you'll see here. Looking at the daily chart of gold, this is significant. We now have a supply zone above current price and not even that far above current price in gold. Could it be in a better location? It could, but it's not bad. It's near the upper part of this, this range here, right? And if you look at gold... It's, it's way up there. So if something happens where we get a nice little quick spike in gold, um, this is definitely one we'll be watching. The profit zone is enormous at the moment in gold to the downside. So we'll certainly be watching that. Um, uh, we don't need to go over those supply zones. Let's take a quick look at silver. So we didn't look at silver yesterday, but we were looking at silver last week if you were in some of those YouTube sessions. And price is just continuing to fall. I don't know if anybody's in silver, but price is continuing to fall uh, from our supply through all of this, uh, all of these uh, filled orders here, right? That's why it's falling so quickly. There's nothing to stop it. And just to point out where we are reaching some off-session hour demand here, but this is nothing that... Uh, this is probably not going to be a big deal. This is not a zone we would buy at, right? It's more for profit taking uh, if you're short silver. But the bigger and more ideal target is found on the daily chart, right? 15,865. That's 15,865. Okay. Let's move over to the ever important dollar. Here it is. So in the dollar, again, we can start with the four-hour charts. That's what we've been looking at. Picture hasn't changed a whole lot since yesterday, other than the dollar has certainly drifted lower, still well within the range. This is one of those inverse markets. When we come down to the 60-minute chart, here's that demand zone we looked at yesterday. So we dipped a little bit deeper into there. All right, there it is. We dipped a little bit deeper into there. Obviously, banks are big buyers of the dollar down here. We're getting a little bounce out of that level again. Often people ask, how many pullbacks can we take into a supplier demand zone? And uh, the question is not, per well, the answer is, it has. it's not the amount of, it's not the number of pullbacks into a level. It's how deep price is going into a level. Our only focus is to quantify how much demand or supply is likely in that area. Well, this is a great example of price came back here once, twice, three times, even four if you count that. 
And each time price just touched the level and turned higher. That's clearly telling us that banks are big buyers of dollars around the world down here, right? So, you know, here's the fifth and almost sixth time back and we're still getting a bounce out of that level. What's changed? We've now gone deeper into the area for the first time. So we can see we're starting to work through some of that demand down there, um, all that big global demand for dollars around the world, right? Next demand zone down around 97.85. Okay. We have some off session supply zones here. These are in a bad location and kind of off hours in the FX market. But if we do get a rally up to this area, perhaps this uh, this cluster of two zones up here is going to be enough to turn price uh, back down and take us a little bit deeper into that demand zone below. Um, but the dollar is a key market if you're trading any FX markets against the dollar. And um, and certainly, you know, when we think about FX and all the commodity markets and, and things like that. All right. On that note, um, Jasmine's got a active trading session coming up uh, in about 15 minutes, and she will be covering futures and forex in there from a short-term perspective. So um, we didn't, we don't need to go through more forex markets here. You're going to cover some of those in, in just a little bit, and then, um, and again, if uh, if you weren't, if you're not aware of uh, the portfolio. You have access to it, right? You have access to it. You can always just go in there and take a look at it. Um, it's updated on a regular basis. And um, and then Bill does these live sessions each week. And there you go. All right. Great to be with you. Have, uh, have, a, great, uh, have a great Wednesday. And uh, we'll talk to you later.